Hi there, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Mouth Off, where today we are going to be discussing BBC Three's brand new series called Normal People, Not Common People, which is stuck in my head, and so is a song. Today, I am joined by the wonderful Scott Davis, uh, who has seen the show. I haven't seen the show. <laughs> I've so, seen the show. So, Scott, what is <laughs> common people slash normal people? <laughs> it's quite, I've now just got common people in my head and I'm trying to remember the lyrics. I want to live like, like common people. It's not that. People. It's not that. That's that's pulp. But it's a classic, classic tune of the 1990s. Um, so Normal People is a new show from BBC Three, which went on to uh, BBC iPlayer for streaming uh, Sunday Just Gone. Uh, and is debuting. I think it's just debuted on Hulu in the States as well in the last couple of days. Okay. So it's, uh, it's got a big kind of uh, push from them as well. Uh, and I think it has aired in Ireland. Anyway, Normal People is a, a new uh, series. So the whole, the whole 12, 10, 12 episodes have already gone on BBC. So you can uh, binge watch them to your heart's content while we're in uh, staying safe in lockdown. Uh, and it's based on a, I'm just going to get the information up here because I don't know too much about the book itself. But the book, it's based on a, a book which was written by Sally Rooney. Uh, and that was a big success when it came out. And the show has been is that adapted. Wayne Rooney's mum? It might be. It might be. I can't tell you. I could click on her and see if she comes up. Uh, no, she's from Ireland, so I, I, unless, son unless, Wayne, unless Wayne Rooney is uh, defected early, you know, defected when he was like two to England. I don't think that's the case. But yeah, it's an adaptation of her book. She's part of the uh, script writing team that adapted it, uh, and it's during the first six episodes directed by Lenny Abrahamson, who you may know from directing Room and directing uh, Frank. We like Lenny a lot. We do like Lenny a lot. Uh, I don't think he's done. Oh, and he did the uh, Little Stranger as well, which came out a couple of years ago. And this was the next thing that he's done. So uh, the show stars Daisy Edgar Jones, who was in uh, Raw of the Worlds, the most recent one on Fox, not the BBC one. Because there was two, wasn't there? That was a bit confusing. There's two Raw of the Worlds adaptations, almost it's like Armageddon and Deep Impact. I together. think there's always one on the go. I think there's, there's always there a stage show or a Tom Cruise film. A Tom Cruise film, yeah. We, oh, it wasn't bad, that Tom Cruise film. Uh, so it's her and Paul. Spielberg directed it. He you? did. Uh, it was Daisy Edgar Jones who, yeah, who we just mentioned, and Paul Mescal, who I think this is his first his first foray into into acting. Anyway, uh, the synopsis is that it follows uh, Marianne, played by uh, Daisy, and Connell, played by uh, Paul, uh, through their time at secondary school in uh, Dublin, and then they move on to college. Uh, and it focuses on them, kind of uh, their romantic life together. So they start uh, uh, sort of going out and sleeping together when they're in school. Um, but then they kind of disconnect and then they reconnect at college. And as the show goes on, it's about their story kind of connecting and disconnecting. And, you know, they're not together and then they are together and they're not together and then they are together. So, but it's not like a, it sounds like a bit of a Ross and Rachel thing from Friends, but it's much deeper than that. This just goes over quite a few years. So, uh, you know, life, as Jeff Goblin would say, life finds a way finds a way and uh, off they go so it's a very it's a very kind of uh it's more drama than it is kind of uh, you might get a sense from the synopsis that it's a bit of a team comedy you know um it's sort of john hughesy type or whatever but it's it's very much not that it's very uh very realistic uh kind of gritty in its way and very true to the to the characters rather than the actual uh, the surroundings and all that kind of stuff, which I, it is true to that as well, but it's not a fluffy piece. It's a very kind of serious, very uh, intimate piece uh, with some fantastic performances. I've watched most of the season so far and it is, it is fantastic. And it does, from what people have said to me who have, or I've read, should I say, uh, it does, it's very faithful to the book, which isn't, isn't always the case. Um, but yeah, we were saying before, Dave, you, I, I, I taught you in how X <laughs> exploded on social media. Yeah. So what's the deal there? So you said that it's gone a bit crazy. What, 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 have, what have people sort of gravitated to? Why are people loving it? And, and why is it, uh, why has it become such a big discussion point? Well, I think it's, I, I just touched upon it there. I think when you, when uh, TV shows or films adapt, adapt books into films or to uh, TV shows, when they adapt it, a lot of, not a lot of it, but some of it gets lost, doesn't it? In, in the adaptation, there's, there's a lot of films out there that are based on books and, uh, have been bestsellers you know uh, there was stuff like the Divergent series and the Hunger Games and all that kind of stuff there was a big wave of that um, and then you know there's all sorts of book adaptations but they never quite bring what was in the book to the screen it's always sometimes it's very very difficult to do that some books are very very dense and very very hard to turn into a film even though there's uh, we, we talked about Star Wars earlier this it's a business and there's money to be made off a book adaptation particularly if the book's bestseller and has got a huge audience and I presume you know showing my uh, knowledge of the book there but i presume the book was such a big deal that it really kind of got into the the zeitgeist of of, of or picked up an audience a very very big audience and i think that's got people excited you know there's 
uh, we talked about like the Hunger Games there, the Hunger Games when it came out, I only use that as a reference because of my film knowledge, but that was such a huge deal, the books, and it was such a huge deal when the film came out that the franchise became such a huge success. So I think that following has come from the fact that the book was, I'm guessing, so successful or was one of those books that people talked about, you know, there's lots of word of mouth yeah, and it just grabbed from, people's attention. Yeah, kind of went round, you know, went round the office, you know, one person read it, gave it to somebody else, and then the other, there's 40, 50, 60, maybe 100 people who know about it. And with the power of Twitter, particularly, I guess, and Instagram, it's kind of fed off of that. And I think uh, the fact that it's uh, kept its audience from the book and the fact that it's been kind of, uh, from, from what I can gather, so well adapted from the book, particularly as the original writers on board. I think that has kind of, uh, yeah, definitely kept his audience going. But Lenny Abrahamson's just a genius as well. If you've never seen Room with Brie Larson and uh, Jacob Tremblay, mm. I mean, that's just one of the, I mean, that film broke me. It's just one of the best films I've seen in the last probably, uh, how, uh, and it must be five years old now, I guess. Because I mean, it's well before her Captain Marvel days and... I want to say 20, 2015, I want to say Room was, or 2016? Yeah, she obviously won the Oscar that's for that, didn't she? Yeah, I mean, and, and Jacob Tremblay became a household name, and just because he's he's probably a, a lot taller than he was when he made that film. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it was it was a special film, and it was a hard watch, but um, it just showed Lenny Abrams' character uh, to be able to pull off such a tricky subject matter to make it, uh, you know, as successful as it was. So, uh, yeah, I, it, you know, this this TV. Yeah, show I think also. Really I mean, different. yeah, well, I think you you said there about room. Obviously, that's an adaptation of a book as well, and. It was a similar situation, I think, where they had the original author as part of the film. You know, it was really important to to him as a filmmaker. And I guess all the, the people behind this show and the other director or directors, I think, on, on this show, that it was important to keep... If, you know, if you're going to ad adapt a book, it's always best to not alienate the writer. Uh, I think you, you, you pretty much kill, you kill half your... Um, yeah, well, Harry Potter's a testament to that, isn't it? J.K. Rowling. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. Involvement. Exactly. And I think over the years, I think that Tom Clancy wasn't particularly happy with uh, the Jack Ryan books and so on and so on. So I think you, you, you alienate the writer and you also risk alienating the audience because they kind of think, well, if you're not making it how the book was, why should we be interested if you're just going to make it something completely different? And I think that's what is really uh, at the heart of this and why it works is because it is very, very true to the to the nature of the book and uh it does such a wonderful job i mean it, it, it the acting the performances from the two leads are just are just phenomenal and they really have to kind of throw there's no there's no getting around what they have to do in this show you know it's a very uh very tender very intimate very raw uh romance uh and it's it's people have said it's explicit i don't think it's it's too explicit but it, it you know obviously it's got a lot of sex scenes in it and they are very um you know they have to very they have to get very very intimate with each other on screen you know and they do it so so well when you really within the first episode you really buy into their relationship also you buy into you know the kind of potentially doomed nature of it you know you kind of think to yourself that you know they're, they're, they're such a good match that maybe they're going to find somehow in there because of their upbringings and because of the stuff that they've had to deal with when they were teenagers that somewhere down the line it might not quite work out so you're always on kind of tenter hooks as to whether they they will or they won't but i think they both do such a good such a good job and it, it you know it deals with all of that stuff and um uh the the lead characters uh connell is very kind of closed off when we first meet him when he's in school very very closed off and that's kind of uh, a big obstacle that they have to try and overcome the fact that he's he seems to be uh, unable to kind of express himself he's kind of he's a bit repressed and and he doesn't quite understand what he's doing right and what he's doing wrong and what he does wrong why it is so wrong you know he doesn't quite understand it but as they go through through college and all that other stuff they kind of both open up in different ways and uh yeah it's just it's a fantastic and it's really really you know in terms of romantic things uh the relationship feels so genuine and it doesn't feel very sugar-coated you know obviously if you want a sugar-coated relationship movie there's plenty of those and tv shows out there you know if you want a happy ending and i haven't got quite to the end yet so i can't spoil anything for you anyway so it doesn't it doesn't from what i've seen so far it's not going to be as uh as a uh, happy ending as as you know say uh you know off the top of my head like a bridget jones or a notting hill or something you know what i mean it's going to have a real kind of a real world impact how their relationship kind of unravels and this years. is because it's based on a book it's a one-off series mm. is it like it's not it, there's no well, they, I mean, if Big Little Lies, the success of Big Little Lies tell us anything, it doesn't matter if there's one book or 10 books. If there's one book, but it's so successful, there's ways and means. Uh, but I think with this, because of the nature of the relationship, it's quite enclosed with those two people. 
I think once you get to a, a certain point where it, it should end, it might be one of those where you just it's up to you to make up your own mind when you get to the end. I, again, I haven't it seen the to end me like the but... fans would not be too happy if there was a, if they, if it d- d- you know diverted away from the book. Yeah, exactly. Uh, too, and and talked about Big Little Lies. You know, the, the the second season just wasn't as good. You know, it, it, it just felt that it was just one step too far. Uh, despite the fact that everybody came back and you know there was some good stuff and they had Mel Street, it felt like the story was finished. But they they were just trying to as you've mentioned before it was probably more a business decision than anything else and probably worked out in that sense but i think with this i think if you're going to stay true to everything that they've done so far with the book and and uh, the adaptation i think you know it might be one of those where they just say no it's up to the audience to kind of fill in the gaps if they if they do or do not stay together or if they aren't together at the end of the show whether they do that together down the line who knows but um, yeah, I think uh, this very much will be a one-off. Yeah, good. Well, uh, do let us know in the comments below what you think. If you're a fan of the show, if you hated the show, also tell us. You know, <laughs> if, uh, but it sounds to me like it's a, it's a hit. As soon as you said Lenny Abrahamson was involved, I, I was sold. So uh, yeah, do check it out. Do give us a like and subscribe if you like this video. And uh, yeah, let us know what you think of the show. So uh, we will look forward to seeing you on the next uh, episode of Mouth Off. And uh, yeah, as always, stay safe, stay indoors, and uh, we'll see you soon. Take Okay. Bye. Bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey you guys.